Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. We missed the whole game. It's Cup semi-final day and there's two things we need to share with you right now. First of all, we really like this piece of jazz music although it doesn't fit whatsoever and secondly, we haven't written a script for this episode, not yet, so we're winging this. Uh, Mark's arriving. It's the Cup semi-final against Ballam and um, oh, yeah, they're playing St Albans on the Saturday after this so mostly they're thinking about the league title. But a cup semi-final is a cup semi-final, so they're going to try and win it. Ballam, on the other hand, are, I believe, three promotions uh, away from being at Dorking's level, so they're not expected to do a great deal. But then again, they've got a good record behind them getting through to the semi-final. I probably should have Googled some more. Oh, there's Barks. Barks is there because he is scouting for Kingstonian. He's working for Kingstonian at this point in time. And because of that, Kingstonian being in the other semi-final will, will face either Ballam or Dorking in the final. So he's there on a scouting mission. He didn't tell me that when he asked me to get him in for the evening um, under my players thing, because I'm still technically a player, but that's a whole other story. Um, but Mark soon figured that out, as you will discover during the second team talk. But here is the first team talk. Right, where's their overload in the diamonds? Midfield and at the back if you play a back four. Play a back three, yeah, one at the back. Well, unless you press, yeah, so you're not wrong. I think, listen, I'm not quite sure. They might play a diamond this lot. But to be honest, it doesn't really matter. But I don't think they'll be too bad. They're not going to be bad. They went to Jersey and they won 4 0. No one does that. They beat Josh's lot, Rains Park, who was smashing everybody, beat them 4 0. And they won the London Senior Cup last year, beat Tuna Mitchell and that. So, so they've got a lot of pedigree this lot. They've had five promotions in six years. So they're definitely not mugs, right? But they're not Dawkins Wonder, but they're not mugs. They'll probably play a fucking 4 2 3 1 or something. But if they do play a diamond, then you two are starting up front. Then one of you, when they've got the ball, one of you drops on the um, base of it, and the other one just shows on one way. Just do what you want now, Alfie, yeah? Back to that, is it now? We've been around Jason's house, fucking write a thank you letter. Um, so, um, is everybody in, yeah? Apart from Cheese, who's running late. So, you can all hear me, yeah? You bothered? Yeah? Listen, lads, we've got to make sure the habits in these games tonight are really, really good. They're going to press the life out of us. They're going to try and strangle us. They're going to press the fuck out of us. They've been some good sides this lot, so I think they're going to be okay. Right? If they play a diamond, we said what to do. We go around the outside. If they play a 4-2-3-1 slab, we go around the outside. It's all about playing fucking beautiful football. That's what we're here to do. So I don't want to give you over instructions. I just want to just keep it really, really simple. There's a bell. Do you know how to, do you know how to, do you know how to juggle? Can anyone juggle? Can you? Can anyone juggle? No? I could teach you to juggle in, in, in two minutes. Do you know that? Five balls in two minutes. I could teach you, I've not got any balls on me. Yeah, okay? When they teach you to juggle, they teach you to picture two bells and keep it in the bell and go ding, ding, ding. If you just do that, right, after a while, you're like, fuck me, five balls. That's how they teach you, right? We have two bells on the pitch, right? So we're, I'll bring, you know, bring some balls where we can't bring fucking, Magnets, I don't know how long it takes to get balls, juggling balls. Um, we've got two bells on the pitch, and they're there. And what that means is, when it's tight, we're trying to play either into these two. Dan, Lincoln, yep. can you come out here just as our, at the moment, our, one of our first choice keepers here, just, for you, just to understand this, okay? And you lot, please, not just Dan. Is that all right, does anyone care? Just come out here. Is anyone bothered? Yeah? <laughs> There's a couple of bells we're trying to hit all the time. Forget their lineup. Forget that, it's not realistic, okay, yeah? But all we're trying to do, when we're under pressure playing out, the number one choice 
is to ring the bell of the winger, hit the winger, hit the winger, hit the bell, hit the bell, feet, feet. Never chest, feet, feet if we can, or if it's safe to do so, into the 10. That's all we're trying to do. So we've got to be a little bit more proactive when teams press us. When all else fails, the point I'm trying to make is this, when all else fails, it goes there, it goes there, because we're brilliant from them areas. We're really good from them areas. That's where we're at our strength. That's where we're at our best, okay? Right? So we're going to play business as usual. Be half decent crowd here tonight. Final we want to get to. But this is our first training session of the week, including the boys going out there now for St Albans, which is where all our focus is for the biggest weekend of the year. All right, boys? Come on. Yeah, we're well known for not winning cups. That's what we're best, best known for not winning cup competitions. Um, this one carries a lot of prestige. We've never won it. Be nice to get to the final. I think we got to the final before. It's called off for COVID. I think the year before was a semi-final. Both of those years we would have won it. And um, we're going to try and win it this year. We're lucky. We're kind of like the Man City, really, of, of our league, where we've always got great players to call on. So the team's really balanced. And there's a lot of boys playing well. So a lot. There's three to four playing that are very much regulars. And we couldn't afford to take any injuries from them. And the other boys playing... Um, are strong first team squad players that have played loads of football this year. And also we're seeing Otz get back in the team. Yeah, I mean, he deserves it. He's, he came here and when we signed him, we didn't necessarily realise quite how little he'd trained. He had an arrangement whereby he was training barely ever um, and that worked for him and the club he was at. And he came here and I think he was expecting it to maybe the jump not to be too big. But in his own admission, it was a couple of yards quicker. So we put him out on loan and instead of just sort of thinking, oh, well, he's literally come from Sid Cup in Kent. He, 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 he trained with us all the way through that loan when he didn't have to. He's been super committed. He's a different player now. I think we'll see actually tonight that he's really, really good. And, and he, I've got my eye on, on, on Ox, you know. He's, um, he, he's, he's an impressive guy and uh, he's a great player, a really good player. So we'll probably see a bit of that tonight. And finally, this week, the next seven days, is going to par partially define your whole season. Um, when you look at that calendar and you look at the fixtures you've got coming up, you're going to have such a different view of this season in seven days' time. You're going to know what the fuck is going on. You must have, you always tell me no, but you must have some sort of emotional no. feeling of, lie, surely not, no. you lie to No, me. I am. As you'll see from this team talk in a minute, I am absolutely tunnel vision on this being defining. I can't afford to look any further than this weekend. I can't afford the players to. I really want them players to believe because it is actually the case that come Saturday night, it's game on. The, the backstop's not bad either. Two home games, record-breaking crowds at Meadowbank. Next two, three, four weeks are going to be, you know, going to be madness, but... I'm, for me, it's St Albans away on Saturday is all I'm thinking about. Get the win. Is that the day when they drop a point? It's going to happen. And then Monday, well, they need to play well Monday because we could go top. That's how it is. Fact. Fact. While walking around the ground, somebody said you need to meet Greg Crutwell. He's the... Uh chairman slash manager of Ballam, just like Mark is. He started the club and took them up through the divisions. He's done extremely well. They also told us that he's a filmmaker and he makes sports documentaries. So immediately decided we need to go and speak to Greg, introduce ourselves and make sure he knows what Bunch of Amateurs is and hopefully we'll work together at some point in the future and that may still happen. Anyway, here's the interview with Greg Crutwell. He's a really nice guy. My name is Greg Crutwell. I'm the uh, founder and chairman of Ballam FC and the first team manager. And we're here today because we've got a semi-final of the Surrey Senior Cup against Dorking Wanderers. Well, I've been here since the day dot because I started the club back in um, 2001 as Ballam Blazers with one under 10 team. And then it's, you know, gradually over the years, it's grown from there to where it is now with sort of 24 teams you know, play a pathway from under sevens all the way up. And obviously we, I started the first team in 2011 when I had players old enough. We had to start at a low level. We've shot through the leagues, five promotions in six years, and we're up to the combined counties um, premier at the moment. So we're at step five. So what's your professional background in then? 
Um, well, originally I was an actor, so I was an actor for about 17 years. Then I, I decided to be on the other side of the camera, so I, um, I started writing as a writer, director, producer, started a couple of production companies, and that's what I've started my own little production company in 2019. 17 years as an actor in England. Were you ever in the bill? I was twice. I fucking knew it. <laughs> twice on both sides of the law. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. My first TV appearance actually ever was in the bill as a copper, and then I came back two or three years later as, as a, you know, some kind of thief or something. I remember trying to bust up the bill, their police station, and the, yeah. Um, well, I mean, I know we're obviously we're massive underdogs. We're step five. We're playing a side that's three promotions above us and flying at the top of the league. Um, but, you know, we've, we've done some major giant killing in the past. We won the London Senior Cup in 2018. We were the lowest level in that. We beat AFC Wimbledon, we beat Dulwich Hamlet, we beat Hendon. So I believe that we can do something, but I'm realistic. I know it's going to be a massive ask. Everything's going to have to go our way and we're going to have to play above and beyond how we've been playing. But, you know, listen, Football's wonderful, isn't it? Strange things happen, miracles happen, and we'll be hoping we can do something special tonight. All good, Slav, yeah? So you're going to get us playing real quick like you do. Yeah. Show me how good you're playing out, because at the moment that's important to me, mate. Yeah. You've been doing it years for me, never let me down. <coughs> Brilliant. You, you will? No, 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 I'm fine. You keep coughing, you right? Yeah. You got COVID? No, I'm fine. Too fine. Fucking cough since my first jab, so. Yeah? yeah. Did you? Yeah. I think we've got to be fucking, we've got to be really respectful tonight. I've got a feeling this lot are going to buzz about a lot. Got to be careful because Barks is here, Barks is here. <laughs> they're down here scouting, aren't they? I think this lot, I think they're going to put a foot in, I'll tell you that now. And so they fucking should. It's a semi final, boys, yeah? Semi final. So our objective, Slav's going to get us playing quickly around the edges. You lot are going to get up the pitch, condense the pitch. You're going to play beautiful football. You're going to go side to side as much as possible. When Bobby and Jimmy can, you're going to take people on. You're either going to score or you're going to put the ball in the box and David or Ox are going to go and head it in the goal. That's all you've got to do. That's it. That's how it works. You get the ball, yeah, and you think, I know they're going to be there. You put the ball in an area, big Ox, barn it all over the place, 1-0. Yeah? Got it? <coughs> Easy. Do me a favour. I'm light-hearted because actually I'm looking forward to this. I'm really excited because it's such a great... We are the Man City of this level. We can put out any team and it's unbelievable. And that includes the boys that comes on. So make sure you give these full respect or you come up short, right? Full respect, OK? Let's play fucking well. Let's get ourselves in a final. This three, four weeks is great. Cup final, hopefully. Yeah, and a big, big, exciting weekend, OK? Come on, let's go. <laughs> Yes! Go on, Jukes. For a split second, Tom I thought... Tom Jukes never happy. For a split second, I thought they were clapping me then, until I saw you behind <laughs> me. Yeah. <laughs> right, keep warm, you lot, yeah? You're not got any bottoms? Yeah, they're in the... Uh, bottoms. bottoms. <laughs> 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 Fucking trigger. Good luck, mate. What possessed you to fucking own a football club? <laughs> <laughs> good to meet you, mate. Good to meet you, man. OK, let's see how a narration without a script goes during the match. Dorking are playing a mixture of first team and uh, kind of peripheral squad players such as Harry Ottaway and Samuel Ab, the players more than capable of stepping into the team um, and that's probably a good thing about Dorking it doesn't really matter who goes into the team they all know the style of play they all know what Mark demands of them we've seen them at training and they have to do the patterns of play um, and they can't mess it up they really can't against trouble um, anyway here you'll hear a lot more erms I don't usually write erms into the script um, so early on here Dorking start with their pattern of play Balham are really in their face and trying hard to, to push them out of their comfort zone. There's a lot of energy in this Ballam team, as you'll see. Now, I don't have any of their names, so I'm just going to have to call them 
either random names or shirt numbers. Should we go with we'll go with shirt numbers? It's probably the fairest uh, way of doing this. So. Uh, Balam have a bit of the ball at the beginning and Dorking um, do a pretty good job of stopping them. Barry Fuller is actually just back from his health scare. I don't think we're supposed to talk about specifically what it was. That's private. I mean, it wasn't even that private. I don't know. He'll talk about it if you asked him. Um, anyway, oh, Mark's talking. Hang on. Well, it's um, 4 2 three, one yeah? Yeah, that's so. it. Many of the players are trying to prove themselves hey, ahead of the running hey, because fight. the game at St Albans is a big deal and... You know, they're kind of in for a league run-in. So Jimmy Mewitt's one of those trying to prove himself. And Bobby Joe too. He finds himself on the bench a lot, despite being quite eye-catching. Um, oh, Cal Kennedy's crossing today is absolutely exceptional. That's the first of many crosses he's going to put in. Trying to think of more crosses than jokes, but we've really exhausted all of those jokes, which is a shame. I'm certainly not going to think of one on the fly. Right, um, I did pause this and I found a team sheet, so I know who's who now. And they're attacking down the left-hand side. The ball comes in to James Adebayo. And his cross, of course, is a little bit of problems at the back. But Slav parries it away. And off goes Bobby Joe Taylor up the left-hand side. They can't stop Bobby Joe today. I remember the two guys behind me when I was filming this were hugely impressed with Bobby Joe. Now McManus playing in the middle of the park. That's his favoured position. Feels he can play up to a 10 out of 10 in the middle. Doesn't feel like he can hit those heights on the wing. But he does a very good job on the wing. Anyway, up top we've got Harry and David. Great work from Bobby Joe down the left, but just couldn't find anyone in the box. Bobby, good areas, well done! Ha, it's always nice to have your commentary validated. That intense high pressing start certainly gave Dorking some pause for thought. Um, and then once Jimmy gets hold of the ball here, he gets a bit of a kick on the ankle and the players are going to begin to think, I don't want to miss the game on Saturday. It's a season-defining game. Jimmy's OK to carry on, though. Look at Sammy enjoying himself at the back. And there's Kane Wills. He's just back as well. So he's got a point to prove to try and get into the team. That's a lovely ball to the feet of Bobby Joe Taylor. He cuts inside. He then turns inside and out. Um, before again, there's Cal Kennedy with the cross, looking for Harry, or the Ox Dog, as, uh, as Dino calls him. Up top, Harry and David, both desperately trying. Oh, another cross from Cal. He's flying. Great start, mate. Great start. Love that. Keep going, Baz. <laughs> yeah, there it is, isn't it? Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Yes! Yeah. 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 The minute he's there, <laughs> nah, no, to be fair, now, to be fair, the minute he got in the, in the box, I'm like, yeah, here we go. Mark is extremely happy to see Barry doing what he does best. The right of the back three getting in behind the defence, which is what Barry does for fun. <laughs> what a club, Alfie. Great finish, H! Well done, Jimmy. Despite being on the bench, it seems that the crowd are still rather obsessed with Alfie Rutherford. Alfie fucking loves it, doesn't he? Okay, no. But we'd argue that it's Harry the Hot Dog Ottaway who deserves some more credit from the crowd. Another great layoff here. Finds Bobby Joe Taylor, and he strikes low and hard. Yeah, Bobby. He always scores in this competition. All the heroes, all the heroes score in this competition. Harry! I'm going on tonight on Twitter. Harry! Five one, hatch it for me. Harry, well done! When it's closed, don't play into it when it's closed off. One man who is mad keen to get on the score sheet this evening is David Radari, the on loan striker. Hasn't scored enough goals since moving to Dorking. And thanks to Jimmy Mewitt, Dorking get a good opening down the right hand side. Bobby Joe knocks the ball into the area, but Radari is offside. He really didn't need to be. Ballam have been working extremely hard, but they haven't got anywhere. Dorking, meanwhile, are beginning to make some mistakes. They reset and knock the ball around the back, but Sammy, when he gets himself a little bit indecisive here, when he eventually gets the ball out to the left, it starts leading to more problems. As Cal Kennedy goes back to the keeper, and James Adebayo shuts him down. Come from Sammy, mate, down there. He really did do his plate in here. Fucking hell. That's Sammy, isn't it? Yeah, he had Sammy some more. He was there. He was there. Bobby was the ball there, but he went back in. 
Dawkins get away with it and go up the other end for a free kick. Mark starts to have a bit of fun with the whole thing. Give it a no! Give it a no! No! Get it! Get it! Give it to Niall! Shoot! <laughs> Fuck off, Turk. <laughs> Fucking useless, mate. Tell you what, Fucking tell you what, useless. Like roll, they take yeah. 600 at training. Yeah, 600, at training. Yeah, 600 at training, exactly. Into an empty net or a slav. <laughs> empty <laughs> net. <laughs> I used to have a great free kick we used to do, honestly, all the time. I think we should do it still. We set them all up there, one bloke here, and they just all head that way, and the bloke just does a late run, mate. On the amount of goals we score from it. <laughs> I honestly don't have a clue what they were laughing at there. But anyway, the game goes on. Dawkins have a corner. Enter Samuel Lamb. Oh, the Buffalo! Buffalo! <laughs> Buffalo's in there as well. <laughs> Buffalo! Yeah, Jukey. Buffalo! Buffalo. Oh, Buffalo rises. Another one. <laughs> Seven days. Huh? That'll be odd. Dawkins are in full control now, and Harry the Op Dog Ottaway is. What's, uh, how do I phrase this? Is playing really well. It's a bit weak. This is why I write a script. That's, I'm going back to writing a script. Hey, that's blue woman. These fucking link up plays been fucking outrageous. Graver. Well left, David. How these link up plays been fucking brilliant. Harry. Yeah. He's, he's a, a good player in this game, mate. The Ots dog flicks the ball to Bobby Joe Taylor as if it were a discarded cigarette butt. The dynamic winger drives forward looking to play in David Radari, who exquisitely dummies, allowing Jimmy Mewitz to ghost in at the back post as if his name were Timothy Claypole. And yes, we've switched back to a pre-prepared script. With half-time fast approaching, Ballam have refused to concede defeat. Sam Pagano causes issues down the right, allowing striker Adebayo a shot on goal. And like a child whose parents have just checked the closet for monsters, Dawkins go to sleep thinking the danger is over. Yes. What's that move? I fucking hate concealing goals. Laurie Goddard places a textbook header into the ground and the ball loops over Slav, who perhaps thought Sammy might be getting on the end of it. Don't take liberties. Why are you taking that kick over there? Then kicking it across your box. Yeah, no. Would you do that in the FA Cup final? No, I'm saying we're not You You're the overload. Yeah? It's a full press game. You're the spare player, you're taking the kick. So you've either got to give it to Barry, but obviously they're double pressing you, or just go in the goal, he's going to give it you, and then we're just going to find a way out, mate. I mean, it's only fine margin, Slav. You've had a good half. You've had a, I thought your, your handling, Slav, and you're coming for crosses was really good. Let's not get sloppy. At the end there, the old Bobby Joe, you've had a great half, then the old Bobby Joe Taylor five-a-side player turned up, running 100 mile an hour, tried to give it to Watts in the fucking pocket. We lost the ball. They've ended up in our box. Don't bother. You've done the right thing. You've played on the outside of them. And then when you've got in their half, you just run through them. It's this, these games, brilliant half. Really good half, Kane. These games are about your standards. Sa Sammy not played, Slav not. I get that, I get that. It gets sloppy, I get that, okay? But listen, we've been okay. We've been okay. This lot are not going to stop running no matter what the score. I tell you what, if they get another goal, they'll run and get that ball and they will put it right on us. They'll put it right on us, I'm telling you. So, right, so you're coming off, yeah? So straight swap. It's just a neat and tidy game. We're going to go into wingers or into tens and play from there. What we're not going to do is start playing into pockets and being scrappy and being messy. I think the boys that are coming off have done well, Sammy and Macca, it's a great run for you tonight at the moment, OK? And the other two need the minutes as well. So let's get cracking, OK? All right? In the previous round, Mark pointed out that Barry Fuller loves to clip into the channel, but Mark doesn't let him do it. Unfortunately for Baz, who to his credit has just come back into the team, he does it twice in succession. Race the ball now. Play the good fucking ball! Shoulder up! 
Who said good bowl? I don't know. I'm trying to see the defenders. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a great deal to report from the early second half exchanges, so we're focusing on Mark's travails on the bench, where he's nearly taken out by a box and then a bottle of water, much to Alfie's amusement. Fuck me. <laughs> you bit everything. What do you do? <laughs> 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 Something on the pitch that is worth reporting on is the performance of Laurie Goddard, who looks a step above pretty much everybody else out there. Go, go. That's it. The number 11 is running himself ragged, and his teammates aren't able to match his quality. It takes Dorking a good 15 minutes to threaten to score a fifth. And we can only hope David Radari isn't watching this episode because that threat is no more real than when my mum used to threaten to take my Star Wars figures away from me. Dave's missed it again. That's got to be harder to do that, isn't it? From the distance of four yards, Radari manages to cushion the ball onto the crossbar and isn't able to get hold of the rebound. He's working, David! It's got to be harder to do down the score, isn't it? We love a redemption arc here on Bunch of Amateurs, and it's not long before David does manage to show his finishing quality. That's Dave. Unbelievable from Cal and Nye. Cal, great touch! He just missed one from under the ball. Literally, he stood. I, I, I reckon you could do it a thousand times and try to fucking miss and not. Noel McManus's driving run sets up David and gives him the chance to bury the memory of the miss as well as the ball into the back of the Ballam net. It's been a while since Jimmy Mewitt did something of note, so he sets off down the right wing like Pretty Patel on a scooter, teeing up a now confident David Radari. Sam Riley makes the save and Jimmy goes flying like an illegal immigrant on their way to Rwanda. Nah, never. Never. He dived. Yeah. We should book him, really. Ballam's high pressing has been consistent right to the end, although in Niall McManus's eyes, their tenacity does eventually cross a line. Don't get yes! Niall! Yes! What are you doing? Fucking hell! Eric Arias? Arias? Arias. Does give Neil a... Neil <laughs> does give Neil a kick in the thigh, which is what sets the midfielder off. Sorry, Nile. Deal with it, ref! Deal with it! I'll talk to the ref, please, guys. Did out? Both players avoid censure, and the match seems to be drawing to a quiet close. Although Ballam have something to say about that. There's a certain irony in Mark being asked for his man of the match choice, just as Laurie Goddard gets his second goal. Man of the match. Sorry, is he man of the match? I don't know. Who would it play? Ox. Bobby, I'll say. Bobby? Bobby, uh... yeah. A more objective selector might have given Goddard a shout, particularly as the midfielder, like a smart boxer, knows it's best to finish around strongly when being judged. Bobby, straight line! Pain is done, yeah. Back in pass. This 11, mate. Hi. Good play, the 11. Goddard beautifully sets up substitute Tomash Woschel. Yeah. Unfortunately for Ballam, they're out of time. Tuck round, Cal. Cheers, guys. Well done. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Yeah, yeah, Cheers, Cal. Cheers, mate. Best of luck, man. Cheers, mate. Best of luck, boys. Cheers, Cal. Well done, mate. Good to meet you, mate. Well done, fella. Cheers, boys. Well done, mate. Cheers, lads. Nice one. Come on, boys. Boys. Um, thanks for... Waiting, everybody. Sammy, Baz, the boys out there have been here all night as well. Listen, um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. To be fair, I'll give them due. They had some fucking energy. Like, I mean, I don't know where they got the energy from, mate, but they was, you know, they put us in a fucking, 
a test in terms of like hunting the ball down, impacts, wanting the ball. I mean, they've got to be fucking fitter than sides I've seen in our league, to be quite frank. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that, boys, okay? So I've got no issues at all um, because the sort of collective in the sort of last 40 minutes is boys that haven't really played a lot of minutes. So we were going to sort of like struggle to keep up the pace, etc. cetera. Um, but listen, we've uh, we done more than enough, more than enough to win the game. So I'm actually completely fine tonight. In my book, I'm totally fine. I'm not going to get the ump about a single thing, to be fair. Obviously, the referee just letting too much go, which means... I can see you like trying to stay out of trouble because obviously their season's done and ours is not. So I sort of saw you doing that. So I, um, yeah, for me, if I look at that game, you know, when it, when there was a hundred percent pace on it and our pattern was good. We were going sideways, doing the right things. It is just about the fine margin. Like you have a great game, Bobby. And then you have a little fucking five aside moment down at goals, trying to run through four people at five three. It's just them little small moments. Do you know what I mean? Like small moments. We got MOM, Bob done really well tonight. It's just those little small moments. You cut the, you know, oh, it's great game, really good game. Little blind ball, you know, like it's these little things we don't. You, you've gone in there, done a great turn, given the ball. We, as a team, all we ever need to do is keep the ball, like just keep the ball. And you know, we're an you know, unbelievable team when we keep the ball. So we're in a cup final, which is great, yeah, okay. And um, if we win that one, we go to Skegness, not Marbella, yeah. But um. Yeah, fuck it. It's got to be. Is it, you have to have a jab or something to go there. You have to have a jab once you've left the place. <laughs> when you've left it, that's when you have to have a jab on the way out. Who you got relations there? <laughs> nah. Um. Listen. So Wanderers give you goals, goals, goals. That's what they do, don't they? Every fucking game. Well done. Well played. Get the gear in, please. I had told Barks and Mike that I needed to speak to them on camera before they left. Of course, they wanted to leave while I was shooting that team talk. Fortunately, Marks knows the show well enough that I didn't even need to ask him any questions. You just point a camera at him and off he goes. Take it away, Barks. No okay. shorts, yeah? Right. Okay, yeah. great. Just stand in. I'm just going to talk, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, obviously, we've seen a lot of games here, but this is the first time we've come in a kind of coaching capacity and we're here just looking at, at Dorking, how they set up, because... Uh, me and Mike are working at Kingston at the moment and hopefully we'll be playing Dorking in the final of the Surrey Senior Cup. So even though we've seen a lot of Dorking and, and know Mark reasonably well um, and we know how they play and obviously he's given a lot up to the cameras to show everyone you know, really bravely how they play. It's nice to come and look in the flesh and obviously there was a chance that Ballum would have won as well so it was nice to see them um, and they gave a good account of themselves. So good opportunity for me and Mike to have a look at Dorking with a, a different set of eyes and report back to Kingstonian our game plan to try and um, go head to head with Mark hopefully in the Surrey Senior Cup final coming up. Meanwhile we appear to have held Mark's post-match interview inside a police interrogation cell. Most of that team out there, uh, Slav, Sammy Alab, uh, Barry Fuller, a lot of them um, have not played Kane Wills in a long time. So when you all things considered we were going to gas a bit today played a team with really impressive work rate and commitment and they wanted to make sure they didn't get embarrassed and they, you know, 4-0 down and 5-1, they've, they've kept themselves in the mix really, nicked a couple of late goals and I, I think that's as, um, that's as good as you get really for that level of football in terms of their energy and work rate and had a few good players on show but the job was done really and we... Um, as we have been doing, just uh, first half demolition, really. We're not a massive, we haven't been a massive cup team. We've always been really focused on the league. Normally, we're sort of having a good season in the league. So, we're not a massive cup side. When we was a park side, there was cups you could win sort of every year. We got to the, we've played, I mean, this is the Surrey Senior Cup. We've played, it's so the Surrey Cup has got uh, different sections. It's got lower junior, junior, intermediate, premier, senior. We've played in every single stage of this over the years. We got to, it got to the final of the premier, lost 1-0. Got to the final of the intermediate, lost 2-0. So in this actual competition, there was a few I remember, um, but we weren't the side we are today. To so get in the final of the Surrey Senior Cup, 
for us is, is excellent and done it every single round at Meadowbank and then the final is at Meadowbank, the neutral venue. So we're going to hire a, a bus and go around the M25 on the road to Meadowbank. I'm going to get you to fucking interview us. Thank you for watching Bunch of Amateurs here on YouTube. You can watch these episodes on Patreon. This was out on Patreon, I don't know, like six months ago or something. Um, you get advanced access to extended episodes on Patreon. So check it out. It's not even that expensive, like £3 a month or something.